And this is not good for Kyle Busch because of that downforce, that right front fender damage. He didn't need this to happen. So Joey Logano. Oh, and a big crash along the front straightaway, including Stenhouse in 62 of Brendan Gaughan, the 15 of Michael Lynette. So the caution comes out again. Oh, no, It'll be our 10th. Again. He lost it over, corrected, and went right into your door. No gas, no gas. So Stenhouse, who had a really strong run going in the top 15, got is damaged. involved in this. Man, look at all the damage and he got right here. This car has been upside down. This is Joe Nimmer. Take a look, now. boy. Holy cow. He was Joe's upside car. down. Yeah, yeah, that car definitely. Take another look. Oh. oh. Okay, does that qualify or he's going to get crazy? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know if a Nick or a Stenhouse got any help there, but he just sort of saw him shoot left. You know what's neat about that? Joe kept driving that car. He was still driving it when it came on the wheel. He's, he's still on the track. I remember Dale Earnhardt Sr. did that one day. Get out. Yep. Turned over and brought it on back to the pit area. I think yep. he can finish the race, guys. Did it at Daytona. That's where it was. It's Newman by a car length over Dillon. Another car length back to Boyer. They run single file off two. Here comes Newman and company up the back straightaway for the final time. Looks in the rearview mirror. They begin to flank out. Dillon looks outside, looks inside. Dillon squeezing down low. Jones topside. Three wide for the lead in three. The Toyotas have hooked up on the back straightaway. Eric Jones and Denny Hamlin, and they go to the front of the field in turn number four. It's Jones by a car length over Hamlin off the corner. His teammate behind. Behind him, Eric Jones leads. The front of his race car is missing. Checkered flag in the air. Eric Jones, by half a car length, will win the 42nd annual Bush Clash at Daytona. After that slip back, uh -oh. caution. Trouble turn four. Brian Vickers is around. Yellow number 18. So much for Jimmy Johnson's gap. I think Brian's been involved about half of those you know, with his four fresh tires. Oh. Oh my. That's what that was. Matt Kenseth had just come back on the racetrack. After the uh, race for 9th and 10th gone wrong a little while ago. 8th, 9th, and 10th, excuse me. This was the uh, race for position I was alluding to. Brian Vickers had raced Matt hard for several laps. And then Matt said, I didn't like that. No. So close, so many times when it should have been his, and it wasn't. And for Jeff Gordon, he's doing this for someone else. Here goes the pass. Gordon making a move on the inside of Earnhardt. Oh, Jerry, it's loose. Down the back straightaway. Big trouble. Earnhardt out. Up and over, number three, and for the 19th time, Lady Luck deals a bad hand. You're in the pits, car number three, Earnhardt, and Dick Bergren is there. What a pile of grit. Earnhardt is in the car. He's barking instructions to the crew. They're trying to tape the left rear fender on. It's barely hanging on. They're taping the hood on. The roll cage has been sandpaper. NASCAR apparently has declared he must have a spoiler, so they're going to now try to get the back deck on the car. There's nothing mechanical holding it on. They're going to have to tape it on. This thing is so beat up. If Earnhardt can make one lap or two, it's an absolute miracle. He's obviously OK behind the wheel. Let's go back up to Ken Squire. Lap down, cars pitting now. There's the damage to Ryan Blaney's car. Cole Witt is in. Kevin Harvick, who's gone a lap down. Paul Menard, Reed Sorensen, and others. We haven't run modifieds here in years. <laughs> but Suarez is going to you know, run we talk a lot. We talk a lot about brakes, and uh, when Jeff sat down with Richard Petty, that was part of the discussion, how brakes are used on these cars now versus then. Used to be able to see a lot out that right side, but not anymore. He'll have to get up to speed here as quickly as he can, because he's a full half lap behind the pack. Still, though, it's about experience. These drivers have to start thinking about, with feedback from the spotter and the crew chief, it's treated like two separate pit roads under green. And one thing also, Mike, you don't want to pit here until you absolutely have to, because if when you do a green flag pit stop, you're going to lose two to three laps depending on where you're running to the leader. 
He's missing a few parts, Arnett. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very aerodynamic, is it? Look at this. this <laughs> <laughs> they just put a piece of sheet metal over there and painted the sticks on it. <laughs> you remember the whole side of that car was torn away by Rusty Wallace when they collided that on the front stretch. Man, that is so funny. <laughs> It just goes to show you how important points are. Each position back from about, uh, what, 12th or something on back or three points per position. And so any position they can pick up, that's an extra few points. And you never know at the end of the year how much that might mean. And not giving up. Klauski is in a lot of traffic right now. He's run up on about eight cars that are right in front of him. So this could get interesting. There is the leader. There is second and third. Now, see, Brad really taking it easy. He's run up on Clint Boyer and David Reagan, Juan Montoya. He's two probably left. calculating he's got enough gap on those two running second and third. He's using that opening for the okay, yeah. air duct to see where he's going. The whole hood is off this car. And you can see the top of the hood is that gray area. I think it took the whole hood pin bar and everything out. I'm not sure. They're going to have to tape this all down. This is a team that almost won the regular season championship and could go to Kansas, the final race of this round, in a must-win scenario. So they've got a lot of damage here on the 22. We'll see what happens. Maybe they can limp at home and get a decent finish out of it, but they were in the middle of that rig. Yeah, 25 laps to go in this race. And look at the hole above the left rear tire where the tire has just destroyed you can see the time clicking down. They had a chaotic five minutes, Steve. Actually, they did not get right side cha tires changed after the first round of repairs. You see them hammering out. There was a point there on the left rear that was pointing down that would have cut the left rear. That's why Todd Gordon brought him back down pit road. But he has barely stayed on the lead lap twice now, but been able to do that, so they're on the lead lap. What the heck is that? Thing? I've never seen this before. I've seen that type of tool used to cut grooves in concrete. I've never seen it used on a race car, but necessity is the mother of invention. And you know what? I love these teams. They, they practice all these things, so they found a piece of equipment to get the job done.